The American dream endures. We must once again have full faith in our country and in one another. I believe America can be better. We can be even stronger than before. It was, it was like every single uh, inaugural. It was everybody from uh, Hank Aaron to Leonard Bernstein. Uh, it was Shirley MacLaine to uh, John Lennon. So they weren't all entertainers, but a lot of them were entertainers. Uh, they were all the political celebrities that you would expect to be any place, but the other celebrities were mostly, mostly entertainers. I think that it would probably be pushing it to put Leonard Bernstein in that category, <laughs> but he was. Uh, someone who contributed a lot musically. Uh, Beverly Sills was there. Um, Lauren Bacall. So it was, there were just all sorts of extremes. And then there were parties that were sort of insider parties. Uh, I can remember that we, the transition staff, took over the um, botanical gardens and had a wonderful party inside the botanical gardens with music in the various rooms and being able to wander around through all the plants. And so there were some really special times there. I was a civic activist in Georgia, an environmentalist, and very active in the women's movement. And I got to know him through legislation that I wanted that he was supportive of. And uh, that's how I got to know them. So he asked me to be uh, deputy political director of his primary campaign and then I was uh, director of his deputy director of the uh, general election campaign and then I was deputy uh, director of transition. It was the first federally funded transition in history. Oh he was good. He was a good man. I mean he gets a really bum rap and one of the things that I did was make sure that women, and it was my responsibility to make sure that women and minorities were included for the first time on a really wholesale level in the campaign, in the transition, and then later that women and minorities got positions that were higher than they'd ever gotten before uh, in the administration. But we had practically every general counsel's position was filled by a woman uh, in all the cabinet agencies. We had two, we had two secretaries, but almost every single cabinet position that was sub-cabinet position that was uh, uh, a lawyer's position was filled by a woman. F especially the first two years, uh, two or three times a year he would meet with, in the cabinet room, with the heads of all the women's organizations. And with those of us who had been active in the uh, administration, and people could talk about what it was that uh, they wanted or what their problems were or what their legislation was. So it was the first time women had gotten that kind of an open door treatment in the White House too. Uh, it was fabulous. I mean, I wish I had the notes that I took at the time. Just hearing the conversation going back and forth and the, uh, the different characters and w one good thing was that before and after the meeting uh, we would get to lobby. I was deputy administrator of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency then so I was able to lobby the Secretary of Defense on the military installations that had so many toxic substances, uh, buried ammunition, etc. And so it was really great. I mean to have that chance when Carter went out of office. Finally the plane took off and the announcement was made that the hostages had been released. They were waiting until he was gone. They didn't want him to have any, any um, sense of place or pride in having negotiated any of the hostages release, which he had done and his administration had done, but it was sort of sad. I think it's a good point to say that he felt a big responsibility in restoring faith in the executive branch, faith in the presidency, uh, as did Walter Mondale. Uh, they both focused on it, worked at it. Uh, in reality, probably would, would not have been elected without 
the Nixon years and the Nixon uh, legacy, the negative part of the Nixon legacy, which was which by far overshadowed anything else about Richard Nixon at that time. 